This week I'm leaving the guys at the Mellon Creek Ranch and I'm headed to New Mexico to do some Audad hunting. Stephanie's got a work cut out for her because sometimes that Audad hunting can be pretty tough. Oh my God. And I'm gonna squeeze in a little bit of predator control on the side. This place is full of coyotes and I know Stephanie hates those things. She's fixing to have a blast. Nice shot. Yes. Big old sucker, isn't he? Hey, yeah. This is it. I'm gonna take him. Time to get up, time to get up now. Our lives move pretty fast, but it's only in the moment of the hunt that life slows down. It's not a matter of what we do, but how we do it. With passion, drive, and the challenge to accept nothing but our best. We are the Wildlifers. always wanted to hunt Audad. I've just never gotten the opportunity. So when this came up with Tri-State Outfitters, I jumped on the chance. I got to hunt with my favorite guide, Nick Cutlip. With Nick as Stephanie's guide, I have no doubt they'll be successful. Audad sheep are indigenous to Northern Africa on the Barbary Coast. In fact, that was their name, was Barbary sheep. It's a really, really tough animal. You know, they, they can survive in the most arid desert conditions ever, and they like the hills, you know, they like the mountains. They're really pretty animals, and they're really tough to hunt. They almost became extinct in their home country, and they were introduced into the United States, mainly Texas. They were able to take a serious hold here and just thrive unbelievably, probably even better so than they would have in their home range. I've hunted all that any number of times. They can be in some really, really steep terrain. Uh, she can expect to have to do some hiking. Oh my God. And there, very rarely do you ever find an odd dad that's by himself. This ranch is literally out in the middle of nowhere. You know, I've spent a lot of time there hunting, you know, any number of different species, and it's it's really really cool spot for all dad. Um, you know, it's got the rough, rocky, canyony country. It's got some high grasslands. Pretty much perfect for where I've seen all dad my whole life. Um, there should be a big number of them. The only problem there is that that ranch is absolutely enormous. It's quiet, it's peaceful, there's no cars driving by, there's just, there's nothing. Hardly even an occasional plane flying over. That's how secluded it is. There's gonna be a lot of glassing involved trying to locate these herds of, of audads and rocks that are pretty much the same color that, that the sheep are. You can get a distance from them and, you know, glass and locate them on the side of the mountain. I think that's really pretty cool. Uh, you don't even have to be that close to them. It's just, they're like little ants crawling over the mountain. It's pretty neat to see. Sometimes getting into range, you've got more than just a set of eyes to worry about. You'll have a whole herd of eyes to worry about, so it makes it a little more difficult. It'll be fun, though. I was just so excited. I was ready for the opportunity. I'm ready to get out there and start hunting. Whew, let's go do this. Stephanie is in New Mexico, hunting the all-elusive Audad. These animals have flourished since being introduced in Texas in the late 1940s. Although their numbers are immense, Audad are being threatened more and more every year by coyotes, a predator that Stephanie loves to manage. This is a great place to hunt Audad on, and 
This place is literally covered with coyotes, so I'm looking forward to the opportunity to get rid of some of them for them. I mean, they can just be devastating on the Audad. Coyotes are just brutal. They, they can take out your livelihood it's just so easy. Well, anytime you can knock a coyote off the face of the earth, you, you haven't just killed a coyote, you saved the life of a lot of things. Stephanie, she's happy. She gets to go shoot some coyotes before the all dad hunt. Doesn't take much to keep her happy, but shooting coyotes will do it. Nick's on this ranch a lot, so he knows a lot of the locations to go. You know, they're great places to call for coyotes. So we're gonna go do a couple stands before we even start hunting all dead. One of the reasons I am just so excited about hunting here in New Mexico is the wide open country. Where I have to hunt in South Texas, there's not any wide open country. It's just very thick, very brushy, and trying to find a spot even open enough to call coyotes can be a challenge in itself. So here in New Mexico, when I have all this wide open country to call them from, well, it's exciting and I can't wait. Stephanie's not passionate about hunting coyotes at all. I think it goes way deeper than that. Did y'all just hear coyotes? I think it's actually some kind of disease. We're gonna sneak over there and try and shoot it. Kind of like mine where turkey hunting is concerned. <laughs> but just hunting coyotes is a challenge. Um, coyotes are very smart and you have to outsmart them. In my own little way, that helps me be a better hunter. Um, she coyote hunts every day. You know, the wind can be blowing 40, it can be raining, it can be cold, it can be hot, it really doesn't matter. At least every single day when she's home, she's gonna coyote hunt for at least a little while. And furthermore, no matter what she's hunting, may it be mule deer, may it be elk, antelope, doesn't matter if she sees a coyote, it just turned into a coyote hunt. I know everybody that goes coyote hunting pretty much has their own system and the way they like to do it. But how I like to do it is use a collar. I like to have a collar out away from me so that I can actually see the coyote coming to me. A lot of people like to use their own mouth calls and I do at times, I like to switch it up. But I guess for my favorite way is just to have a collar so I can see him out in the open in front of me and get a shot at him coming into the collar. I just think it's fun. I always just use jackrabbit and cottontail because they freaking love it. They come running to him usually. I think from the moment I turn the collar on, my excitement level is just sky high because that is just a adrenaline rush, a charge for me. What are you gonna find? Just search in the area, what are you gonna see? And after a little bit of calling, we had a coyote coming straight at us. There he is. And when a coyote comes out, it's just, it's a huge rush. I get like coyote fever. I just get so excited. Can I take him? Yeah. Nice shot. Good shot, Steph. Uh, when I'm in a stand and I know I just killed a coyote, I'm like one from the team, but I don't just quit. I mean, as soon as I shoot coyote, I'm looking for another one. I'm, I'm excited. I just want another one to come in. I mean, my favorite thing in the whole wide world, one of my bucket list things that I want to do is I want to kill four coyotes at one stand. Even though we've got one coyote down, I know there's a lot of other coyotes out there that we can go find before we start this odd dad hunt. After a successful morning, Stephanie has decided to keep the ball rolling with the coyote hunt before moving on to Audad. Well, Nick and I have decided we're just gonna take the rest of the day or we're gonna make coyote stand after coyote stand. I think secretly Nick likes coyote hunting as much as I do. Well, at this stand, it took a little bit longer than the other stands that we've been in today to see something, but we finally, we see one, he's coming in. Right now he's 400. Yeah, he is limping. Nice shot. <laughs> Good shot, Steph. Um, yes, got one. 
no matter how many stands I make in a day, no matter how many times I've gone calling, it never gets old to me. Each stand is just exciting as the next. Big of a sucker, isn't he? Hey, yeah. Where'd I hit him? I don't know, but it worked. I just love it. Fantastic. <laughs> Look at his bushy tail. Yeah, he's pretty. As the afternoon progresses, Stephanie and Nick make a new set. And it's not long before two coyotes respond to the call. Could Stephanie be in reach of her bucket list goal of four? Let him keep coming. Next time he stops, he's at 260. Unfortunately, Stephanie and Nick had to move on without success at this set. But today's not over yet, and Nick took Stephanie to another valley to call. Nick has one spot picked out where it's kind of out overlooking a big wide open mesa, and we, we're up high, so it feels like we have like a height advantage. I'm excited to call something in here because we're gonna see it from a long ways off coming in. And sure enough, it wasn't long after we turned the collar on, we had a coyote coming straight at us. Yeah. I've had a great day hunting coyotes. Maybe it wasn't as many as I could have got, but I still feel good about taking any coyote out. I love it. I'm so happy that we got to do this all day long. Nick's picked out some great locations for us. It was a blast. But now, let's go all dad hunting. So you see that big mesa right there all by itself mm -hmm. with two levels? That's like one of their favorite spots. We have quite a few people here all looking. And then all of a sudden, we see the all dad. I think he's around 30. Oh, look at his furry legs. I want him. He's cool, huh? When we do, we realize it's actually the one we want to shoot. I think we should get in position and shoot him. Yeah, they're way up high, and they went around the corner. So if we go like 100 yards that way, we might be able to see him. Is that what we're gonna do? Yeah. Okay. I wanna stay on the edge. The odd dad was on the very top. <laughs> That's a female. But I'm up for the challenge. So the mountain we see the Audad on is a huge mountain with like another mountain on top of it and then another mountain on top of it. It's not gonna be easy to get to them. You know, we're gonna have to hike up another mountain, probably hike up another mountain until we get to the very top. <laughs> She's gonna to have to hike this mountain here and it's, it's not easy by any stretch of the imagination. I live in South Texas, we don't have mountains, we don't have hills, we don't even have like a canyon. Let's do this. Yes. She'll do way better than I, I do. 
I have trouble in the altitude. Whenever I get somewhere where I can't breathe, it, it bothers me. I've always been that way, but she's in great shape and she'll do fine. Oh my gosh, I did it. That's a female. As we're creeping around the mountain, Nick sees one female Audet, and uh, he knows the rest of them are gonna be right there, so we just like hurry up, set up, and get in position. Hold on, hold on. Wait for a good shot, Steph. He's right behind a bush for me. Get ready when you get a good shot. Can I do it? Right behind his shoulder. This is it. I'm gonna take him. When you get a good shot. I hit him. Oh, I saw the rock blow up. I missed him? I don't know. I what? hit him. Are you sure? I see it in scope. It's behind, huh? it's back. I thought I saw him do this in him. I think he scope. might have done that, but it hit either his horn or the rock behind him. Luckily, Stephanie used a silencer, which didn't spook this Audad miles away. However, the Audad climbed even higher up the mountain, so Stephanie and Nick make a new plan to get another shot at him. I don't know, we'll just probably work our way around that cliff and follow it over to the right and get up on the top bench right below where the ram was. We can get to that ridge right there, maybe. I climb up that second tier and the third tier was literally like a ladder climb straight up. As Stephanie sets up her shot, she utilizes an old hawk catcher that was erected in the 1800s to rest her gun on. Just to see them, they're only about 120, 30 yards away from us and they're looking at us and here I am trying to climb up, get my gun in position, and I've already put so much into this hunt. Just climbing up that huge mountain was just, it was amazing. That hit him. Give me the binoculars. I, I think I saw him fall. I felt like I took a good shot. I squeezed off. I don't think I hit him just in the best position. I was a little concerned because Audad can just run for miles. I knew I hit him, so I was hoping he was just gonna be dropped somewhere right there close, and I hear rocks moving, so I know something's moving. We all peek over the edge, and we see him limping off. I had hit him, but I guess it wasn't a good shot, so I literally get to the end of the mountain, the opposite end that we were on. It's like the ninth inning that turned into the 15th inning and we're still tied, you know? Wait, 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 he's about to stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the weather's just insane, beautiful, cold, and I get to make a great shot on an odd dad, and he dropped, and I just. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good shot. I've got chills right now just thinking about it. Well, I couldn't be more pleased that she got her odd dad, but then I started getting pictures of this thing, and I, I've seen a lot of odd dad in my life, but this thing is a giant. Well, I'm glad she had a great time. She got a, you know, an enormous saw dad that's going to look great in our trophy room, and she got to shoot some coyotes. So I know that was just a little cherry on top. Getting the odd dad was like a bonus. <laughs> that's how much I love coyote hunting. Walking up to them and seeing all that hair on their chaps and just their huge horns. Ah, uh, it was just, I don't know. It was just a surreal feeling. It was amazing. He had some scars on his face. Just you could tell he was just old and been in a lot of battles and he was just a tough sucker and uh, he was just beautiful. For all 
all your wildlifers' social media needs, make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.